Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, so last night I was listening to the uh, Trick or Treat soundtrack uh, by Fastway, and lo and behold, Sammy Kerr spoke to me, and he said, "Dude, you need to do a review on Girls Night Out from 1982, A.K.A. The Scare Maker, because this movie doesn't get a lot of love, and I love you." So yeah, guys, Girls' Night Out, if you haven't seen this movie, I really enjoy this one too. It's, um, you know, it's a little slower, it's got a little more cheese to it. Not slower, but I mean, there's not, you know, there's not a, like, ten kills and, like, people getting thrown against a tree in a sleeping bag, like Friday the 13th or something. But some pretty good gore and stuff. It's just a pretty cool film. Uh, kind of a lesser known one. Uh, pretty hard to track down, I think. I'd like to see a Blu-ray on this. But, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, from 1982, Girls' Night Out. Uh, Girls' Night, N-I-T-E. I don't know what that is. But, uh, a.k.a. The Scare Maker. I think it was called Scare Maker in uh, the UK or something. Uh, but this one starts out, it's kind of, again, it's kind of a different one. It kind of reminds me, the beginning, just when you first see it, you're like, man, this is 82? It feels like a late 70s kind of flick. I don't know, kind of like Honeymoon Horror-ish, Satan's Blade. Like, they, they're 80s, but they look like maybe they were shot in the 70s or something. And it actually came out a few years after that, but it was filmed in 82, I believe. Uh, stars Julia Montgomery and uh, Hal Holbrook, which we all love, we all know and love. And his son actually makes a debut in this as well, as one of the uh, kind of red herring. Is he the killer? Is he not? You know, one of the guys. But uh, I really like this one. Uh, you know, like I said, it sort of takes place, uh, like it seems like late 70s, but it is early 80s. And... Uh, basically, what it is is uh, they've got brief synopsis here, guys. There's a you know it's like a party kind of town. There's a college dorms and this that kind of whole scene. Uh, but there's a uh, scavenger hunt that takes place over the night, like you know from like ten o'clock at night till three in the morning or what it, whatever it is. And the cool thing is there's a DJ in this movie and he's playing tunes like continuously like these old like Love and Spoonful tracks. I don't know what the deal was with Love and Spoonful. They had some kind of deal with this because it says this, in the credits that the songs were all, uh, you know, courtesy of. So, I mean, they just, I don't know, they were trying to get promo, I guess, from Girls Night Out for their album. I don't know. But uh, if you like Love and Spoonful, this is the movie for you. But, so, the, you know, this DJ keeps coming on. He's like, okay, guys, here we go. And he's playing a track from the Love and Spoonful. And he kind of keeps popping in and out of these scenes. Like, it keeps coming back to him, like, playing these tracks. So it's kind of got this continuity kind of tied into this DJ. And he's also giving out the clues to the scavenger hunt. Um, so obviously, A, we know he's not the killer, but just kind of a cool thing, kind of a throwback. It's kind of like this moment locked in time of that era when these songs are out and he's kind of keeps playing these tunes. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, uh, there's a couple of boyfriends that have kind of been dumped and they're kind of got, you know, possible motivation for the killings that are about to occur throughout the night of the scavenger hunt. And so, and there's a mascot. And he wears a bear for, what is it, the DeWitt, whatever, Bruins, or who knows whatever they're called. And he wears this bear costume. And so, you know, the, the kills sort of start to occur. And they're taking place with this guy in a bear costume, as a, in a mascot costume. You don't see this every day. I mean, this is, this is why this movie is so cool. The guise of this kill, of the, the killer is fantastic. You know, and is it the original mascot, or did somebody kill him and take his costume? But also, as things start to unfold and the kills start to occur, this guy decides to take four steak knives and tape them together with like hockey tape or something and put them inside of the glove, like kind of on the inside of the paw of this thing. So he's got this hand with like razors on it. It's awesome. Uh, and this is before Friday the Third, before uh, Freddy, guys. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. And so it just kind of evolves from there. There's a lot of slashing, not a lot of slashing, but you know, there's kills that take place, you know, surprise, you know, jump scares, a guy comes up from behind and like knifing somebody or slashing them and killing them. So it's kind of a typical slasher in that way. Uh, you know, nothing overly original in the story, but due to the fact that it is 82, I mean, it was kind of earlier on, and you know, I see it's, it's got a fair amount going for it. Um, like the 70s, 80s soundtrack is, is quite fun. But the kills are, you know, pretty good. There's some, you know, like we just talked about the Prowler. There's definitely not as much gore as the Prowler. But some good kind of gore and some good suspenseful scenes and a pretty good story overall, guys. 
I mean, I would highly recommend checking it out if you can get it, especially if you're a completist like me, like you have to see every slasher out there. Eventually you're going to come across this one, but you know, I would try to, try to seek it out just because it's different. You know, you've got this killer in this bear costume, just something that's totally unseen, that we haven't seen, and like very early on. So, you know, it didn't have one of the holidays that it was celebrating, and like, you know, all these kind of things. It was just a standalone kind of a dorm slasher kind of thing. And pretty cool. And the very end, guys, the very end, I must say, is one of the few movies that actually makes my skin crawl and kind of gives me, it kind of this tingly, you know, like I feel the hairs on my neck stand up. And I watched it a few times the other day, and I, there's something about it. There's kind of this whole kind of unraveling of who the killer was, um, and you know, there's a whole backstory which I won't get into. You know, Hal Holbrook's like the local uh, sheriff, and you know, there was a murder there years ago, and this guy's in an insane asylum, but you know, it seems like he's maybe gone missing, and so that maybe you know that's who the killer is, kind of thing. So there's this whole backstory, but when it all kind of unfolds at the end. Man, this this kind of scene. I mean, it's it's not the same thing as like sleepaway camp, but it's kind of shocking to me. And I, you know, I watch that and I go, oh my god! <laughs> you know, I almost feel like a little kid again. I like covered my eyes. I was just like, because the camera lingers on this thing, and you're like, what is this? Is this is it really real or is this not real? Or did it just? How did this happen? You know, and you see part of the costume, and oh my god, it, it's really cool. And for that. This movie is highly regarded in my mind, it just even just for the ending. It'll go along with the th for the slash and you know the, the typical thrills and chills we all enjoy because it's it's pretty pretty good. But the ending, I really like it, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this. If you've seen this movie and if you've seen the ending, if you know what I'm talking about. I don't know. It's just this the last parting shot of this. Just it kind of creeps me out still, and it just kind of gives me this creep factor you know like i said like the hair stand up on my neck i'm watching this going yeah it's i don't know for me that ending alone like i said spectacular there's what the cover looks like guys girls night out i mean it's really cool now this disc is actually put out in night like 2005 um it's weird because when you put it in it, it says Media Blasters on it, which is, they, I don't even think they're still around anymore, but they, they look, their opening is fantastic. It's like right up there with Vestron, you get this, these like CDs kind of floating by, and these VHS tapes, and this whole thing is like Media Blasters. <laughs> I like that. And then there's like this 30 second thing, I guess the company is called Guilty Pleasures or something. And uh, so there's this whole, I was like, oh, it's like, it seems like the beginning of a movie. Kind of like uh, Killer Party or something, it's kind of 80s scene, I'm like, what is this? And then it's like, guilty pleasure. So it's like the 20 second little intro for their company or whatever it is. So that's on here. So on this, in fact, it does say guilty pleasures. Not, no mention of media blasters on this. I mean, the covers, they should have the bear on the front. I mean, there, there he is on the back. Look at that. That's wicked. Like, look at that. He's got his claw with the tape and everything. And this movie is, is, is damn good, guys. Check it out. It's part of the slasher collection from Media Blasters. I've never even seen another film in the slasher collection, so I don't know what the hell this thing was about in the first place. There's nothing inside, like no, no little insert or anything, but man, if you can track this sucker down, like I said, it's about 13 years old now, this disc, but man, it's so good. Anyways, guys, please click subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when the next videos are coming out. Uh, leave some comments below if you've seen this, if you think this ending is crazy, or if you think I'm just crazy, because I think this ending is amazing. Like, I really, it's just, there's something unsettling about it. Really cool. And, um, you know, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And we'll talk to you guys on the next one. Take care.